To begin your horizontal stabilizer assembly, you'll see on the very first page, it shows the exploded view of the entire assembly. On the top left, it gives you the table with the item numbers, which are represented in the exploded view, as well as in subsequent pages, these item numbers are still referenced in the table on the first page. Um, you'll see the part number is listed next to it, as well as the description for each part, so you know exactly which part to use for each step. So as you can see here, it gives us a list of our first parts that we need to begin with, and we're going to start by dimpling. So once you've got all your components that need to be dimpled selected out, uh, the next step is to locate exactly which holes are going to need to be dimpled. And I like to mark them out with a Sharpie just to make sure that I don't over dimple it. <clears throat> um, something else to make note of is the holes that need to be dimpled are actually very slightly smaller than the holes that don't need to be dimpled. So when you have a row of holes that are going to accept eighth inch rivets like this, you'll notice that there's a, a break basically where the holes begin to get a bit larger. And so always verify in the instructions, look for some identifying feature like this row of holes here lines up in the instructions with this hole and make sure that corresponds with where the, the hole size changes. So you're gonna mark that out everywhere and make sure that you don't dimple too much. I like to leave the plastic skins on for this part just to avoid any kind of scratching the parts that you might do. And then once you have everything marked out, you're gonna dimple your holes. So now that everything's dimpled, it's time to move to the next step of the assembly manual. So here you can see that we're gonna countersink 16 total holes at the end of the horizontal stabilizer center angles. And make sure to note the orientation of the countersink so you don't accidentally countersink the wrong side. Now that we've got everything fitted up in Clico together, we're ready to start riveting. So as you can see, I put the top row of Clicos and the bottom row of Clicos, even though we're not doing any riveting there yet until the skins are on. Uh, it's just good to kind of be thinking ahead, just double check everything that's lining up correctly. Um, in the manual here, it says four holes not to be riveted these here and these here. Um, these are going to use AN bolts later on. Um, also, all of the 3 millimeter, 3.2 millimeter holes uh, do not get riveted yet either. Those are going to be for the ribs later. So as you can see, this is the orientation of the parts. These parts here, the red, are on the inside of everything, um, but they're outside of this green skin. So it's just like it shows in the manual there. Okay, so now that the rivets are all in place, this part of the build is complete. That entire page is now finished. So we can set this part off to the side. And you'll see I've already got all the parts for this next page uh, deburred, cleaned up, and ready for assembly. So we're going to begin on the next page here. And as you can see, there's no dimpling, there's no countersinking required on this particular step. So we're just gonna begin with clecoing and assembling it, uh, making close note of the holes not to rivet, as well as the rivet direction. So now this page is complete. Uh, it should look like this. Uh, basically, I leave marks on to let me know where not to rivet, um, and then that wipes off easily with acetone later. So this part is now complete, and we're ready to move to the next step. The next page is rivet detail for how to rivet the ribs to the spars on the horizontal stabilizer. So as you can see, I've already got all the next components cleaned and deburred and laid out in their positions for how to clico and assemble uh, for riveting. So now it's time to put in the clicos and then the rivets. Now that we have the ribs riveted to the spars for the horizontal stabilizer, it's time to run the wire for the trim servo through the grommets, as well as fit the skins with Clicos to check for alignment. Once you have everything Clicoed together, place it upright on two by fours or blocks like this. This will allow you to visually inspect it for any waves in the skin or any distortions that you might not like. If you do have anything like that, remove the Clicos and adjust your ribs underneath uh, accordingly. Sometimes they'll be bent down too far or up too far and you'll have a bump or a wave. Um, and that can be corrected by removing the Clicos and bending it into place. 
And once you have it positioned how you like it, then we're gonna need to check for twist. To do this, you can either use a laser level or a plumb bob and place it on the center notch of the bend of the skin and check where it lies. As you can see, we're going straight down through the top hole, the rivet, and then the bottom hole. Then we're gonna check the other side the same way. And as you can see, same thing, we're straight on both sides. And now you've completed your horizontal stabilizer.